Welcome to Easy Limu Learning Simplified. My name is Eric. I'll be taking you through this topic, coordinates and graphs. And for this particular lesson, we're going to look at something on terms used in coordinates and graphs. These are terms that you need to be familiar with as you interact with uh, concepts related to this topic. So we have a few questions on terms used in coordinates and graphs to help us with illustrations on what these are all about. And then, of course, at the end of the lesson, you'll be having some assignment to help you with practicing and just to help you check on your understanding of the concepts as we are going to discuss during this lesson. We have uh, so we have the following terms that are used to represent, I mean, uh, which are used in uh, coordinates and graphs. And the first term that is we're going to look at is called uh, coordinates. So when you talk about coordinates, what do you mean? So if it's one, we'll talk about coordinate, coordinate. So if there are many, we'll be talking of coordinates. So what are they? What are they? So what are coordinates? So these are numbers that are used to represent the position or the positions of points, you know? So, we say that the positions of points in a straight line can be illustrated by use of a number line. Let's see. So a number we've we've looked at one of our lessons that we've done previously was on the, the number line. So we have zero at the center. As we move to the right, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, and this is endless. We also have negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five, and this is endless. It goes up to negative infinity and positive infinity. So if you 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 had uh, a number of points which are in a straight line, then you could describe their positions use of this number line. So let me give an example of maybe two points, like maybe a point is here. There's another point there. And there is another point here. So point A, B and C. So point A can be described, I mean, the position of point A can be described as, as negative four. B is a two and a C is seven. So what you are calling like uh, A negative four, B two and C seven. So there must be some reference points. So when you talk, talk about seven, we mean from the reference point, number of points, number of stars from the reference point. So you count the positive side, this positive three, positive seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you get to positive. So this can only work for, for what? For those points that are in a straight line, you know? If the points are in a straight line, you can use the number line to basically tell the positions. And we use numbers. These numbers, we call them coordinates. Coordinates, coordinates. They represent positions of points. When we talk about coordinates, we mean numbers that are used to describe the positions of points. So we have just illustrated we, we, we've, we've just done an illustration with points which are in a straight line. So what if we have points that are not in a straight line, points that are in, uh, possibly scattered, scattered? How do you do, how do, you do it? So we're going to look at that later on as we continue with the lesson. So there is also some other term used here called a Cartesian plane. So this is just the normal definition of a plane. So it's a plane found by the intersection of two coordinate axes axes that are perpendicular to each other so you see like the number it's like we have two number lines which are intersecting at the 
at the, the zero mark. So this zero mark where they intersect is normally called the origin. So that if you are giving the position, you know, we've said coordinates in the previous example, you have said the coordinates, they are the numbers that are used to represent positions of points. So in, previously, in the previous example, we looked at points that are in a straight line. So what if the points are not in a straight line? They are scattered on a surface. Then you use now two intersecting number lines. We call them coordinate axis, vertical axis and horizontal axis. And where they intersect, we call it the origin. The horizontal axis is called x-axis. The vertical axis, this one here, is called y-axis. And this put together is called a Cartesian plane. So the plane that is formed by the two axes intersecting perpendicular to each other at their zero mark, you know. We call it the Cartesian plane. And this Cartesian plane can be used to, to, to determine the positions of points which are not necessarily in a straight line. You know, in the previous case, we looked at points that are in a straight line. So what if the points are not in a straight line? Then you can use the Cartesian plane to help you tell the positions. Yes. That is with reference to giving directions. So you would say start from the origin, move seven steps to the positive side. Yeah. So we have the x and the y axis. Remember we talked about the vertical axis called the y axis and the horizontal axis called the x axis. So the x and the y axis divide the plane into four regions. So we have this region, we have this region, we have this region. Each of them uh, are a quarter you know, of the whole. Yeah, so each of them forms a quarter of the whole. That's why we call them quadrants. So we have first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. So the quadrants, we start from the positive side of the x-axis. Remember, the horizontal axis is called x-axis. So we start from the positive side of the x-axis as we move in the anti-clockwise direction. We move in this direction. So this is called first quadrant, second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. Because each of them forms a quarter of the whole. So we say the x and the y axis divide the plane into four regions. Each of these regions is called quadrant. So if there are many, we will call them quadrants. So the quadrants are named as first, second, third, and fourth, starting from the positive x axis. You know, you move in the anti clockwise direction. This direction is called anti-clockwise. The opposite would be clockwise. So first, second, third, fourth, and and uh, first, second, third, and fourth quadrant. Okay. So what you're calling clockwise and anti-clockwise, if you look at the hour hand of the clock, this is the clock. So the hour hand, so this is one, two, three. You know. So the hour hand of the clock will be moving in this direction. As the clock ticks, the hour hand of the clock will be moving in that direction. The direction uh, taken by the hour hand or the minute hand or the second hand of the clock is what we're calling the clockwise. The reverse of that is called anti-clockwise or anti-clockwise, as indicated in the figure below. Now, we say that the system of locating points using two axes at right angles is called you know Cartesian coordinate system. Yes. So you would be locating points, would be locating points using the two axes, the x axis and the y axis, which are are perpendicular to each other, meeting at right angle to each other. So that system of locating points using the, the Cartesian, Cartesian, Cartesian plane, we call it the Cartesian coordinate system. So you'll be talking of in 
a Cartesian coordinate system, the vertical axis is called the y axis, and the horizontal axis is called the x axis. So we have uh, a few questions here to help you with uh, practicing and also just to help you check on your understanding of the concept as uh, have been discussed during this lesson. So briefly explain what is meant by the following terms. So we have the first term as Cartesian plane should be able to just to try and describe what that is all about you know when you talk about a Cartesian plane what does it mean assuming you are talking to somebody who has not been into any mathematics class they are interacting with this word for the first time in their life and they're wondering what is this thing you are calling a Cartesian plane you should be able to describe to them what a Cartesian plane is possibly by use of a well labeled diagram so briefly explain what is meant by the following terms in, in your own words. And then what does an x-axis mean in simple terms? How about y-axis? And what about the origin? What's your understanding of the origin? So you can always attempt, when done, you can always post the responses on the comment section. Will we be able to look at them and give feedback in the due? Otherwise, that is all for now. Till next time, goodbye.